Welcome dear audience, students and scholars. Here I am Dr. Ramjad Ali. Dear scholars, so far as we have uh, assembled the dynamic aggregate demand and aggregate supply model, which is sometimes known as a dynamic model of inflation and output, and we have used this model to show how various shocks affect the time paths of output inflation and interest rates and uh, we have used this model to design the monetary policy uh, uh, so in this video we are uh, going to discuss a case study what caused the great inflation introduction uh, in the 1970s inflation in the united states got out of hand the inflation rate during this decade reached double digit levels. Rising prices were widely considered uh, the major economic problem of the time. In 1979, Paul Walker, the recently appointed uh, chairman of the Federal Reserve, announced a change in monetary policy that eventually brought inflation back under control. Walker and his uh, successor, Alan uh, Greenspan, uh, then presided over uh, low and stable inflation for the next uh, quarter century. Okay, the dynamic aggregate demand and aggregate uh, supply model role during that period. The dynamic aggregate demand and aggregate supply model offers a new perspective on these events. According to research by monetary economists, the data on interest rates, output and inflation and estimated the parameters uh, of the monetary policy rule, they found that Walker Greenspan monetary policy obeyed the Taylor principle whereas earlier monetary policy did not. In particular, uh, parameter theta pi, which we interpret uh, as the responsiveness of the target interest rate to inflation was estimated to be uh, 0.72 during the Walker uh, Greenspan regime after 1979, close to Taylor's uh, proposed value of uh, 0.5, but it was minus 0.14 during the pre-Walker era from 1960 to 1978. Okay, the negative value of theta uh, pi during the free walker era means that monetary policy did not uh, satisfy the terror principle. Okay, then we have to discuss here the trade-off between inflation and output. This finding suggests a potential cause of the great inflation of the 1970s uh, when the US economy was hit by demand shock such as government spending on Vietnam war and supply shock such as the OPEC oil price increases the Fed raised nominal interest rates in response uh, to rising inflation but not by enough. Therefore, uh, despite the uh, increase in uh, nominal interest rates, real interest rates fell. The insufficient uh, monetary policy response uh, not only failed to squash the inflationary pressure, uh, but uh, actually uh, exacerbated them. The problem of failing uh, inflation uh, was not solved until monetary policy rule was changed uh, to include a more vigorous uh, response of uh, uh, interest rates to inflation. Okay, while the further discussion about the trade-off between inflation and output, an open question is why policymakers were so passive in early era. Here are some conjectures uh, which are given by the Colorado et al. Okay, here uh, we have to discuss one of the main questions. Uh, why is it that during the pre-1979 period, the Fed Reserve 
followed a rule that was clearly inferior. Another way to look at the issue is to ask why it is that the Fed maintain persistently low short-term real rates in the face of higher rising inflation. Okay, one possibility is that the Fed thought that uh, the natural rate of unemployment at this time was much lower than it really was uh, or equivalently uh, that the output gap was much smaller. Okay, here we have uh, uh, an other interpretation uh, related to the trade-off between inflation and unemployment. Another somewhat uh, related possibility is that uh, at that time, neither the Fed nor the economics profession understood the dynamics of inflation very well. Indeed, uh, it was not until the mid to late 1970s uh, that uh, intermediate uh, textbooks began emphasizing the absence of a long-term uh, uh, or long-run trade-off between inflation and output. The ideas uh, that uh, expectations may matter in generating inflation and uh, that credibility is important in policy making were simply not well established during that era. Okay, what all this suggests uh, is that uh, in understanding historical economic behavior, it is important to take into account the state of policy makers knowledge of the economy and how it may have evolved over time. So this is all about the case study what caused the great inflation. So see you with another video. Ciao.